Hey guys, it is Julie here with JT Wealth. In today's video, we are following up on the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act that was just recently passed. So let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back and thank you so much for being here. Now, a couple days ago, we did a video discussing a bill that was about to get voted on that could possibly cause some troubles for Chinese companies in regards to their listing on American stock exchanges. So now that the bill has been voted on and passed, we're gonna do a quick recap of what exactly it entails and how it could affect Chinese companies, plus whether companies like Neo believe that they will be able to comply with these new laws. And just before we jump into all of that, this is just your friendly reminder that if you enjoy today's video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, if you like free stocks, make sure to check out our referral link to Weeble, which is down below in the description. Right now, they're giving away four free stocks just for signing up and funding a new investment account, so make sure to check them out. Okay, now as seen in many recent headlines, Chinese companies are looking to face more scrutiny as this bill cleared the house. Now, if they don't disclose more information, they could risk removal from the US stock exchanges under this new legislation, which President Trump is expected to sign. So the bill, which is the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, would require the companies to disclose more information about any ties to foreign governments and the Chinese Communist Party, and would remove them from the US exchange after three years if they did not provide US regulators access to their audit information. Now this bill passed with bipartisan support. As politicians from both parties have criticized the lack of transparency in the Chinese financial system, saying it could be putting American investors at risk of fraud, Chinese law restricts auditors from transferring certain company financial information out of the country, limiting its visibility to US regulators. Now, many Chinese companies do not comply with American regulatory standards, including Baidu, China Mobile, PetroChina, and the Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation. So under this new legislation, these Chinese companies could eventually be pushed off American stock exchanges if China does not adjust its financial practices. Now, Senator Van Hollen is one of these senators behind this new bill and says that the three-year window should give Chinese companies ample time to comply with these regulations. He said that if we allow a country to pass laws that shield their own companies from providing important information to American investors, then other countries would follow suit. Right now, China is the only outlier in the entire world. And so this is a time where their companies are going to have to, you know, find a way to provide this information or ask for their own governments to change some of these rules. Now, on the other side of things, Wednesday before the vote, Hua Chunying, a spokeswoman for China's foreign ministry, said the legislation showed that the United States has adopted a discriminatory policy against Chinese companies, and that the right way to solve the problem is for all parties concerned to strengthen cross-border regulatory cooperation in a frank and open manner. Now, people familiar with China's economic policymaking said Beijing officials were frustrated with the American stance on the issue. China has tried hard for more than two years to reach a compromise, these people said, and perceives the issue as an all or nothing stance by the Trump administration in demanding extensive financial reports from Chinese companies. They also said that China is not worried if this new legislation takes effect. These stock markets of Shanghai and Hong Kong are much larger and deeper than they were a generation ago, and valuations for many companies are often higher than in New York, so Chinese companies can raise money at home if the United States makes them feel unwelcome. Now, many investors are worried about what this would mean for some of the companies that they hold. Now, with this legislation, they do have a few years to comply with these new rules. So although we have seen some Chinese stocks falter a little bit amid this news, any big changes are not gonna be happening immediately. Now, taking a look at some hot topic EV companies, Neo does believe that is in compliance with the new law, but Lee Otto's prospectus illustrates the issue. The audit report included in this prospectus is prepared by an auditor who is not inspected by the PCAOB, and as such, our investors are deprived of the benefits of such inspection. In addition, the adoption of any rules, legislations, or other efforts to increase U.S. regulatory access to audit information could cause uncertainty, and we would be delisted if we were unable to meet the PCAOB inspection requirement in time. That language was included in Lee's December 2nd SEC filing, and similar language was a part of both Xpeng and Neo's SEC filings from August. 
but a spokeswoman from NEO responded to an emailed statement from Barron's saying that NEO was aware of the situation and has become compliant over the past few months. So as expected, I think many Chinese companies will follow suit, as obviously they do not want to get delisted from the US exchange. So many will be taking whatever steps they can to become compliant. Now, hearing from another behemoth Chinese company, Alibaba, their spokesperson referred Barron's to comments from Alibaba's chief financial officer, Maggie Wu, after the Senate bill passed unanimously this summer. At the time, Wu indicated the company would try to comply with any legislation and reiterated that Alibaba's financial statements have been prepared in accordance with US accounting standards and audited by PwC Hong Kong since 1999. She also noted that the big four accounting firms were in discussions with Chinese and US regulators, including the US Public Company Accounting Oversight Board on the types of information that could be exchanged while staying in compliance with Chinese laws. And like we said, there are still three years for companies to comply before being delisted. So in that time, we could see different amendments or different agreements reached to avoid these big companies ever actually becoming delisted. Analysts expect Beijing to take a wait-and-see approach in coming months as they try to assess the Biden administration's approach. While stimulus and the pandemic are likely to be the initial focus of the administration, Trey's notes that China is one of the few areas with bipartisan support. Opening the door longer term to a more expansive China-related bill that tackles issues on multiple fronts across agencies, including human rights, climate change, digital taxes, and opening access to certain markets. Areas where the progressive part of the Democratic Party and the more hawkish Republicans could possibly find common ground. That means assessing China-related risk will be a skill investors want to hone for 2021 and beyond. Okay, so now as far as advice to investors go, Meet Kevin did a video covering this topic and really highlighted some interesting scoops on the PCAOBs and their approved firms, so recommend checking that out. But he had a piece of advice that I strongly agree with, and that is always maintaining diversity. So by not having all of your eggs in one basket, you should not be affected should some of this turn for the worst. As always, guys, you know I love hearing from you, so please leave your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Are there Chinese companies that you're invested in now that you're worried about, or do you think this will blow over in the next few years and we will be business as usual? Let me know what you think. If you made it all the way to the end of today's video, make sure you give us a big thumbs up and that you're subscribed to the channel as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and cheers.